today. Um, I just thought I'd make this as a really quick intro uh, for this video um, because I just watched a video back and it's quite interesting. I'm talking about uh, the Wi-Fi grid systems and how if you film at night time in like, well I don't say this actually, I forget to say this, um, but if you film at night time, well in different lights basically, it doesn't have to be night time, any different lights, it does show different elements of the system from the Wi-Fi that we're like all living within all the time. Um, and so that's what I was talking about at the start of the video, the grid system and stuff. Actually feeling like as if making short videos but then like whacking more content into them is making me like realise why actually I'm going to look forward to uh, the normal YouTube time being back where I don't have to like time watch the whole time. Whilst it's been great doing some fast blast videos, they are quite intense and they definitely have invoked like quite intense reactions, some of them. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to, like, traumatise anybody or be too intense. And these troll people that are, have, like, this nutty conspirators page, the lies which they write is the conspiracy, like, all on its own, like, on a whole new level. Because they're the ones which are, like, running around saying I believe in aliens and stuff. <sighs> and, like, chatting nonsense about everybody. Like, it couldn't be more manipulated if possible. You know, it's really ridiculous. So seriously, they want to get a grip. It's so ridiculous. It's so sad. Imagine being so full of like sadness and like hate because people think all these trolls are just paid trolls. Yeah, of course there's some, but I think it's more likely that the paid trolls are like computer systems, computer programs. I think that um, there'll be a personal element, of course, but I think it's like actually they're going against the very things which they need to set themselves free. I mean, of course, there's loads of conspiracies and lies in a, a truth movement which isn't real because, you know, it's manipulated, which is why I'm always saying we should have it first hand and get it for ourselves, you know, like first hand is God, well, God gives me clues and then you, you, you go with the clues. I don't look on truth sites. I do look in dictionaries and encyclopedias and like the sources and just really random places. Uh, which are nothing to do with it, like really seem to do with anything but then when all the like pieces like fit together and have some context it all makes sense and like suddenly sometimes things won't make sense for like six years or ten years or twenty years but the groundwork will happen in little stages and then I'll go back to it sometimes things make, things make sense immediately it just depends doesn't it what it is and if you're ready or not but I can tell you something hand on heart I've never been traumatized by God I've never been stamped over by Jesus you know it just doesn't happen they handle you with care and love and yeah of course we want to read the Bible when we're ready and of course we can go in like dip in and out of it we do things when we're ready enough to do them you know at the end of the day there's so much to change and life's so insane and I don't know what to say I mean I'm really direct and true but I do believe in not damaging people any more than they already damage. It doesn't help. It just puts people off. And I think that to do that in Jesus' name is like spiritual abuse. Even though you know the person's heart is good and, and they're trying to like help. Anyhow, enjoy. Take care. And you can see in a millisecond if you try filming anything at night time, you can really clearly see the like electronic system and how bad it is. You know, we're like literally our living. Sorry, I shouldn't really just have it filming that, should I? Um, but we literally are living. Look at the window. You see all the light manipulations. You can actually see if you actually look. It's just if they pick it better on uh, on camera, then I think, well, I mean, clearly they look different, don't they? The perception changes on camera to how it looks with the naked eye. Definitely shows more than the naked eye would see. I suppose because it's having to decode it diff slightly differently, isn't it? It's decoding it from an electronic perspective to look how we see it. But it's not quite the same, it's, it shows more. It's mad, because all the things which uh, I film can be seen, but we're not going to like literally see them in quite the same way. Well, I mean, it's not like I try and see, it's so ironic, because when I was younger, and I wanted to see things all the time, I mean, I'd be like, oh, please God, please, you know, if there's, if there's like, well, I always knew there was life after death, but I'd be like, I want to see like this, or I want to see that. And it's like mental, you have to be so careful what you wish for, because I'm not kidding. All the things, I have always seen stuff actually, just it's only when I'm like quite awake. I mean, I always see stuff to a degree, 
but I don't see things as clearly, uh, obviously. It's really obvious, isn't it? It's just that when I was 20, I saw a lot, um, but I didn't really hear like the voice of God. I just like feel and I'd see, I'd, I mean, when I looked out in the trees, angels stood protecting the house, like the boundaries. I'm, I'm sure we did have, you know, I know God was very present because there was such evil also present trying to, you know, trying to destroy. There was so much going on that I'm absolutely sure they were really angels protecting the house at the time that I saw them, you know. We knew what, like, the threat was and we knew uh, that we had to, like, be solid and strong and um, we were. At that point in time, we were very united. Um, it was only really that any, there was a lot of people that would come to try and like, just, and they'd be used to try and destroy like the bond and the purity of love that we shared with one another and that we had for Jesus, have for Jesus, it hasn't gone. It's just, I mean, obviously, this is a long time ago. It felt like at the time I'd joke, I mean, I'd half joke, because I, I was actually being serious, but I'd say it in like a more lighthearted way. <laughs> and I'd say like, it's like the devil himself has like literally taken it a personal mission to try and like destroy the love that we have. So, I mean, you can't destroy that kind of love, but it can get manipulated and it can become toxic unless you manage to maintain like, not let anyone like tear you apart. I mean, ultimately, we were living together as uh, partners and we were the same sex and that's wrong and we shouldn't have done that. But we didn't know at the time and you can only work with what you know. Like we soon like realized not that long after we split up, we re both like realized that it's not really good to, to you know, I to I'm not anti-gay in any way, shape or form. I'm anti the gay programming. I'm anti the genders. I realise what it really means, but I'm not anti any gay people. People are not bad because they're gay. They really, really manipulated and confused. Not bad, you know? Like when you're there, you don't really think for one second that that isn't like real or good because it feels like love in its purity is good, but it's twisted if you like, you know, if it's manipulated or used, it, in the wrong ways it's it become, can become toxic even when it starts off pure and obviously that's not good so when i like say i realize now and i realize by my mid-20s that being gay is not like really what god wants for us in you know but that doesn't mean he hates us if we are he loves us regardless um and he you know it's it's really difficult he knows like if somebody thinks they're gay and feels like they're gay and living like they're gay because they genuinely think that's the right thing to do and that they really are. And these days, the kind of mind control that goes on to bring that to people's conscious like lives starts from really young in age, you know, at school. It's crazy. Um, and because I think like most kids go through a patch when they're going through puberty where the sexuality is all over the place. But these days, if you jumped on and told they're gay or bisexual and never have a chance to like figure out who they really are. If I'd have been a, a kid back then, I, oh, I just dread to think what would happen to me, actually, because um, I might have been all right. I might have like found a lifeline in escaping through like the things which really interested me back then now are on computers but that said uh i'm so thankful that it wasn't like that back then purely because all the things that interested me i discovered like firsthand and you don't want to be stuck on a computer searching through i might not have learned to rely on god that's what i'm trying to say i think it's easier for kids these days to rely on on computer technology than it is to rely on this figure that they d might not feel or know and they might just think is all like a myth you know at the end of the day um my psychology was reversed and that's what was worked within me so i had all spirituality cut away from my life by my family they wouldn't acknowledge anything 
that made me like really really thirsty and hungry for it but um i also wanted to heal my family i don't think they banked on me realizing that everything i was being shown looked so perfect but it didn't feel perfect inside it felt confusing because like the kind of like conditioning to only really remember the good and be really nostalgic and stuff like that um so what saved me was i knew money didn't make you happy and i was kind of running at 16 to try and like figure it all out and so that was the ingredient i was really intrigued in like spirituality because of the cut off i was really loved horses because i was really good at it and again they tried to stop me doing that I didn't make any sense. All of this stuff didn't make any sense at the time. It does now, of course, because I'd have been like kept under control by the horses, uh, as I was up until really recently, whilst probably I'm pretty, well, I'm certain that they wanted me to be like a new age, like speaker at some point, which is why I had to wake up really young and like live what I lived. Except having like found God uh, properly and always believed in Jesus is what saved me. You know, I won't do conferences. I won't make like videos for any like anyone or do any radio interviews or I don't want to. Uh, I don't, I don't want, I want, don't want the truth manipulating or used in like any scenarios which can be like a manipulation of the real truth. And so that's why I always say no. I wouldn't mind going and speaking somewhere and I would do if I felt as though it was like an appropriate conference which actually was there you know for the love of Christ and not for any twisted reasons so no new age stuff thrown in there or alien quote-unquote alien stuff and all the rest of it I can't do that it's wrong and by <laughs> well I was gonna say as well the people that really need to recognize who's pure and true and that's like always like a blessing